welcome to Hope in the Pain. My name is Kim Peek, and I am here to just encourage you and to inspire you to have hope. Whether you've had an accident that changed your life instantaneously, whether you've had a relationship or a situation that ended up causing some heartbreak, and that heartbreak is just as real and as difficult to deal with as a broken leg, whether you have a chronic illness or a disease, all those types of pains are very real. That pain stops us in our track, but you know what? Hope really keeps us going. It has kept me going. We all face pain in life, but you know what? I am right here and I'm right there with you in it. Hope has kept me going and I have come to believe that being alone in the pain is the worst thing of all. I don't know about you, but when I feel alone in that pain, that is when I face huge discouragement and I just feel so isolated and it's hard to keep life like going at that point as far as reaching out to friends, as far as wanting to learn something new, as far as being interested in what's going on in the news, all of those things. It's hard sometimes if pain is consuming us. So I've started this podcast because I too am dealing with pain. Now my pain comes from um, MS. And I want to share a little bit about my story with you because as you hear my story, you will know why hope is so, so important to me and why I want to do this podcast so that every week you can get a burst of that encouragement to have that hope in your life. You know, hope is like the wonderment of a child as they look at the gifts under the Christmas tree and they wonder what could be in there? You know, hope is like that because it's the wonderment of still believing, you know, that something could get better in our situation. Whether it's a physical pain, an emotional pain, a mental pain, if we have hope, we believe that things can get better. And that in you know, motivates us to reach out to our friends, to know what's going on in the world, to learn something new because we see a reason for it. Okay. So a little bit about my story. I am a go-getter. Just ask really literally anyone I know. Okay. I have my kids that I raise and I love that. I was also always involved in nonprofits and, and um, volunteering well, um, through nonprofits in the community. I did so much in my church. My husband is a pastor, and so you can imagine that I was really involved um, with that. I also um, had a lot of side hustles along the way when I was raising my kids. And then when my um, middle child, my daughter, was going into her senior year of high school, I um, kind of replaced those side hustles with a full-time job. And I loved it. I love working. And so having MS and dealing with the fatigue and the pain and the other parts of it has been really, really hard for me. Okay. So um, I like I said, was diagnosed with MS. Um, this is um, October of 2022 when I'm recording this. And I um, was diagnosed with MS in 2021. And that was after a few years of some really weird nerve issues that, you know, MS is a disease that affects everyone differently. But even with that, um, my... Um, my MRI showed that the lesions um, on my brain, my spinal cord, weren't the, I guess I should say spots maybe on my brain, they weren't progressing. And so um, it didn't necessarily fit exactly with MS. But at some point, it, it came to the point where it was, it was uh, obvious that it was MS. Um, I got diagnosed and my whole life kind of changed in 2021. Even though I'd had nerve issues um, for um, a few years, it wasn't enough to kind of keep me down. Um, in fact, in the 2020, the year 2020, which changed the world for all of us because of COVID, I um, 
I planned a wedding for my daughter. She got married in June of 2020. And then my son got married two weeks later. Um, yes, you heard that, two weeks later. And I was able to help my um, daughter-in-law, my future daughter-in-law at that time, um, with um, some of her plans for the wedding. Um, uh, that was a joyous time. It was an amazing time. And I did have my, my symptoms, but um, at that point, they were easier to um, kind of put to the side. You know, when you have pain, there's a, a level um, of pain that you can kind of put out of your mind and keep going, right? Um, whether it's at your job, home, uh, your friendships, um, things you're planning, you can kind of go ahead and put those to the forefront. Well, I got to the point um, in 2021 that the pain was so significant, I couldn't do that anymore. In fact, in May of 2021, um, my husband and I went down to the Mayo Clinic. Um, I was so glad he was with me. He um, He's such a trooper in, in helping me uh, when we travel like that. And um, I went to the Mayo Clinic because I had a pain that... Um, couldn't be, uh, couldn't find the reason for it up here. Been to um, a, a couple of medical um, people and, and nobody could know exactly what was causing that pain. So no one could do anything about it. And it was getting really, really painful. Um, so we went to the Mayo Clinic. Um, and, and many of you, if you have uh, pain that's been around for a while. You've probably like me, you've done a ton of different things to, to try and get to the bottom of it, get to the root of it, right? There, there's one thing in managing, um, pain. There's another thing in, um, healing pain, right? And having it go away, which is what we all want. So I, um, went to the Mayo Clinic and they actually were able to diagnose. And that was wonderful because they gave me a medication, um, that I was able to take and that did help to um, really calm that pain down a lot. Well, here we are in 2022 and um, I have some other pains. I have some other symptoms of MS that um, have made it so that I went on leave for my job. And I'm not really sure what the future holds, right? Um, but I know today I deal with pain. I deal with a lot of symptoms. And it's not where I want to be, right? And if you're dealing with pain, it's probably not where you want to be either. And so I find that having hope, right? And hope comes in a lot of different ways. And we can talk about some of those. But if you're like me, that hope is what keeps you going, keeps you believing that something could be different tomorrow, right? Hope keeps me with that belief. Hope also has kept me going in from going into deep depression. You know, I know if I didn't have hope, it would be really hard to keep my life going in some of the ways that I've already talked about, right? To keep my friendships going, to really be the best I can be for my husband and my children, right? To learn new things, to care about what's going on in the world, to care about other people. And why is that? I think it's because, at least for me, when you get to the certain point that pain is at such a high level, it can be consuming, right? It can be all that I think about, all that I focus on. And you know what? Sometimes there is pain to that degree. And that is so, so tough. And I've been there, right? Obviously, I'm not there at this moment. But I want to tell you a little bit about this studio. The studio that I'm recording from is in my house. And let me tell you why it's in my house. The studio is in my house because that way I can come and record when I feel up to it, right? I was in a different situation where I would go to a studio on a certain day at a certain time and record my podcast because I actually have two podcasts and I'll tell you about that in a little bit. But it got to the point that I wasn't able to keep that up because sometimes on that day, maybe I was having a really bad day. With MS, you can have really bad days and you can have pretty good days, right? Um, and some people even have good days. I don't really experience that much, but if I can get to a pretty good day, 
I am pretty happy about that. And so with this studio, I love it. It's really totally me. And it allows me, again, to film when I'm up to it. So I'm really glad that today is a pretty good day and I can record. But you know, getting in mess and having to deal with this is not how I saw my life, right? Um, you can tell I'm not in my 20s. In fact, I, uh, my kids are. Um, but you know, I didn't really think about having any kind of medical issues to deal with until I was at least 60 or 70, you know? I took good care of myself, figured I was just going to, you know, be kind of cruising along, doing the things I love to do um, until I was a lot older. And then MS hit me. Again, it, it really stopped me in my tracks. So, you know, I wonder where you're at, you know, um, with your pain. And again, mine is physical, but yours could be mental. It could be emotional. And, you know, we can't really compare pain at all. There's no use in that and it does nothing good. But again, we all need that hope. And so I already have notes for so many episodes talking through about what I've experienced and what it's like to live with pain. Okay. Um, so I am really excited to be talking with you all in the future on all these weekly podcasts. And I hope you'll listen because again, I want to inspire you. I want to encourage you. And I want you to know that you are not alone in your pain. That in fact, I think a lot of the things that I experience are common to what other people experience in pain. Again, that's not comparing pain, but what it's doing is saying, me too. I experience that as well. You know, um, whether it's issues with um, f- keeping up with your friends, whether it's an issue of can you work, maybe part-time, can you work at all, whether it's an issue of, you know, finances, dealing with these costs of, of having pain and what has to happen for that. You know, all these things hit us. They hit us and it's really difficult to overcome them, especially if we are thinking that we are alone. So I wanted to share with you just an example from my life um, of how I'm dealing with things and um, excited to see in the comments if any of you are experiencing that too. So a couple of examples um, just recently from my life. You know, um, in 2021, I call it just a dumpster fire. You know, I call the whole year a dumpster fire because I was really dealing with um, extreme pain a lot of that year. And um, as you can imagine, that changed a lot of the dynamics in every area of my life, right? And so one thing it changed is I got really behind around my house. I don't know about you, I love to purge. I am a purger. I'm an organizer. Um, I don't know if any of you are, but again, anyone that knows me knows I love organization and I love having my house in order. And I've talked even on organization at different um, places, whether it's been to groups of ladies at my church, I've done it a couple other places because I feel like me being organized just allows me to live my life focused on people instead of my stuff. But you know what happened over 2021? I totally got behind on purging and organizing. So now that I'm feeling pretty good some days, I have a few hours here and there to start catching up on everything I got behind on in 2021. And Oh my goodness. I got to tell you, it's difficult. It's really, really difficult for me to look at different areas of my house and realize how far behind I am and just to have all the stuff that I need to go through. Um, And so what I've learned from that is as I'm going through my house, and I actually have friends that have come over and, and helped me on some areas of my house, which has been so good so good because um, I don't have the energy to do 
like a big area or to do a lot in one day. So if I can do a little bit and something, somebody's there to help me, that just takes me from here to here, not only getting it done, but my, my spirit, my, my mood, my heart is just uplifted. And I'm so encouraged, um, because someone is there to help me. And it's not just what they do. It's them being involved in my life, being involved in my journey, saying, yes, I want to come alongside you. I want to help you because I love you. And that has been so good for me. And so I just want to encourage you. Number one, if people are asking if they can help, find something they can help with. Um, and, and let them help you and, and get the joy out of that. And they're, they're doing that because they want to, right? And I had to learn that lesson, which I'll talk about a little more in a second. But the second lesson I learned out of catching up on all these areas of my house is that I don't want to have a lot of stuff. I don't want to have as much stuff as I used to. I don't have the energy to take care of, to to deal with as much stuff as I used to, which I, I think is a, is a great thing, right? That's a good thing that I can say is coming out of this, right? I'm going to have less stuff to take care of. I, I always feel like everything we have requires my time, my money, and my energy. And, you know, if my energy's gone down, I want to make sure the stuff I have is really useful to me, really beautiful to me, and that I really, really want let me talk about another lesson I've learned. So like I said, my husband is a trooper. He is just so helpful to me in so many ways. But you know, that can be, I don't want to say a burden on him, but that can place a lot more on him, right? He's working, um, he's doing more around the house. And you know, he's doing things to help me, things that I didn't need before. Um, at this point, I mean, I'm still up and around, um, you know, but I don't get as much done as I used to. So that puts more on him. And so I have learned that when I have friends that reach out to me and ask me if they can help me with something, I need to take them up on that. Okay. And here's an example. A couple of weeks ago, I had a friend text me. She said, Hey, I'm going to be right out by you going to the grocery store. Is there anything you need, anything I can bring you? And so you know what? I went and I looked at my grocery list. It only was about eight items long because my husband was going to stop at the store on his way home. And I said, I texted her back. I said, you know what? That would be amazing. That would be awesome. Thank you so much. So I texted her that list. She dropped them off. It wasn't out of her way, really. It didn't take more time for her. She was happy to do it for me and it saved my husband that trip. So it was such a vivid picture to me of how life is or how life should be and how life can be when we open ourselves up. Now, you know what? I wish it, my life was such that I would have run to the store. You know, it used to be, I would have run to the store without even thinking about it, grab those items and that's great. But you know what? Now things take longer for me to do. And like I said, I wasn't even going to do that. My husband was going to do it. So in this case, it just made his day easier, right? And so she dropped off the groceries. It was awesome. We chatted for a few minutes, which was also nice because I got to see her. Um, and then she took off. Um, and you know what? I just Vimmo'd her for the cost of the groceries. It was so easy. Um, and it really made my day. You know what? I think she was really happy to help. And you know what? I've had so many people say to me, we want to help you because of all the times you and your husband have helped us. And at first it was really hard, um, for me to say, yeah, I need help because I, accomplished so much in my life. I, I wasn't really a multitasker. Once I had that third child, multitasking for me went out the window because if I was multitasking, I was not paying attention to my kids. I found for me, but I got a lot done. I just, I just did. I had a list. I would plow through it and 
I love that. So um, it's been hard for me, but it's also starting to be good for me. It's, it's not really hard anymore because I realize that is how I still connect to people. And I, it's not like I have people every day helping me um, at all. Maybe once a week or twice a week, a, a friend does something. Um, I've got one friend that loves to garden, and she's coming over once a week. And a lot of those weeks, we sit and chat on the couch. The other week, she goes out in my yard, and she helps me with my flowers, which actually I was never very good at anyway, so it's going to look a lot better anyway. Another um, friend um, texted me one day, and she said, I'm bringing you dinner Tuesday night. I, I thought, oh my gosh, did Doug reach out to her? That's my husband. Uh, did somebody tell her I needed a meal? It turns out she just wanted to do that. She knew that Doug cooks most of the time, and she wanted to just make things easier for Doug and I, and she brought um, dinner, and it was so good. It was so good. And she brought all these fun little, she brought some little cookies. She brought some little candies, um, which was fun for my son. Um, she brought little side dishes and she brought enough that it was leftovers for lunch for me for like the next two or three days, which was amazing. Um, because when I have leftovers for lunch and I just grab something and I throw it in the microwave or however I warm it up, that is so, so helpful to me. But what was amazing is she just said, I'm going to do this. And you know what? It was very interesting. Tuesday, the day she was planning on bringing dinner, ended up being the worst day I had had in two weeks. And I was actually in bed when she came to the door with dinner. And I had told Doug, I said, you know what? Let her come up and see me. I really want to be able to thank her, and I want to chat with her for a few minutes. You know what? Um, before, I would have thought, okay, I need to be up. I need to be downstairs when she comes. And again, instead, I just had my husband send her up. She came in. She saw me in bed. She saw me not doing very well. And I told her, I said, this was the perfect day for you to bring dinner because I haven't had a bad day like this for a while. And I didn't even get out of bed. Do you know how weird that seemed to me for someone to just come upstairs when I'm in bed not feeling good? I mean, I don't know if that has really ever happened. Um, I take that back. It happened another time, which I'll talk about another time. But that was with one of my friends that's his closest family. This is someone I don't know really well. And um, I had no problem with her coming up. And, I, and you know what? She felt so good knowing she had helped us so much on a day that was really, really bad for me. Those are just a couple of the lessons I've learned. But out of them both, there's hope, right? And, and when I can look at my stuff that I had to take care of as this huge burden that is going to take me forever to get through everything. Or I can realize my friend showing up to help me organize brings me hope, right? I can look at, you know, somebody um, bringing me groceries or cooking for me just out of the blue is just so embarrassing that that has to happen now. Or I can just see it as just the gift that it is. And, you know, a gift, going back to what I said at first, hope is like that gift under the Christmas tree that we just wonder what is in it, right? It brings a sense of wonder. And, you know, that hope of what my friends do for me is that same gift. And it's the wonder of realizing that I'm in a community that is, is, that is willing to help me. That is willing to help me. I didn't say that very well, sorry. That is willing to help me. And that is a beautiful gift. So I want you to be encouraged to find hope in your life by the gifts that you are being given right now. Is there someone who offered to help you and you kind of slept it off saying, oh no, I'm fine, thanks. Which is one thing I used to do. 
But, you know, if you have somebody like that, I just encourage you to reach out to them and say, you know what? I appreciate so much that you offered. And you know what? This would be a huge help for me to do. Now, you may notice that when my friend offered to go to the grocery store for me, I sent her eight items. I knew that wasn't a lot. I knew it wouldn't like add to her time of her day. Like here's my 50 item list, right? It was just eight things I need right now. But I have found, I feel better when it's a specific link thing like that, right? And when it's something I know is just kind of just something somebody can do that's not going to take a lot of their time, but they've offered, right? And I guess for me, I do that because that's how I like to help people when they have something specific that I can help them with, right? Um, that's how I've always been because otherwise I wouldn't know if I was really helping. I wouldn't know what to do to help. So um, I think that can be really great. So anyway, hope in the pain. That's what we're going to be talking about, the hope. And, and again, I wanted to share my story with you to start off. I wanted to share with you just a couple of the recent lessons I've learned. Um, and, and again, they're just gifts to me. And I just really um, thank God for them. So um, please subscribe. Please share this show with other people you know that could be encouraged or inspired because of the pain they're dealing with in their life. And I just want to encourage you to make the most. Whatever situation you're in, whatever pain you're dealing with, make the most. In other words, do what you can. Don't overdo. Don't push it too hard, but make the most.